Last week, I was sitting in my first ever statistics lecture, and the professor did a survey where he asked 200 mathematics students what their thoughts were on statistics. He then plotted the results on a bar chart. What do you think it looked like? Maybe it looked like this, or like this? Well, it actually looked like this. Now that might not surprise you, but remember, these are mathematics students who have chosen to study maths for the next three or four years of their life. And the majority opinion was, it's all right. When I asked my subscribers what they thought, it was basically 50-50. Surely this proves all of this is nonsense, right? Because only 22% of my subscribers dislike or hate stats. But this is a maths channel. Most people here love maths. This shouldn't even be a question. When it comes to the least favorite branch of mathematics, according to a poll on Student Room, statistics the is the least favorite, with mechanics in second, and pure is the most favorite. There are some who would even go so far as to refuse to do stats altogether. Hey, hey, you forgot your stats homework. What, what are you doing? Ah! When I asked people who study maths to rank their modules from favorite to least favorite, they almost always pick pure on top, then mechanics, then stats, then they forget that decision even exists. But when it comes to which is most useful, it's actually the opposite way around. In decision, you have algorithms, voting systems, finance, military strategy, artificial intelligence. I mean, guys, come on. In stats, you have economics, healthcare, data analysis. In mechanics, you've got engineering, robotics, architecture, and in pure, you have... Uh. So why is it that the more useful something is, the less people enjoy it? Well, first, you need to understand what we're actually talking about here. Pure mathematics is defined as mathematics which is not currently used in the real world. So the lines between pure and applied maths are always changing. For example, for hundreds of years, elliptic curves, which are curves described by this equation, used to be studied as a part of pure maths. There was no actual benefit to knowing about these curves until 1985 when Neil Kablitz and Victor Miller set about creating an algorithm which could encrypt messages on the internet. Kablitz and Miller both independently realized that these elliptic curves from pure maths were the perfect tools for encrypting messages on the internet. Basically, an elliptic curve looks like this, and if you draw a line from any given point, it will intersect with the curve. This intersection is then reflected in the x-axis and then rejoined to the original point, forming a new intersection. Then you just repeat this process again and again and again, n times, where n is the private key and the function is your public key. Take a look at the URL on this page. You see how it says HTTPS? Well, that S tells you that your connection is encrypted using the same elliptic curve method which means that only you, YouTube, and the government know that you're on here. So pure maths eventually becomes applied maths. Just because we can't find a use for it right now doesn't mean that we won't be able to in future. But it isn't so much a liking of pure than it is a disliking of stats. One person I spoke to even said that he refused to answer a single statistics question on his A-level maths paper. And if you don't already know, A-level exams are exams that 18 year olds in the UK take before they go to university. And statistics makes up one sixth of the A-level maths syllabus, which means it's very likely that he dropped one or two grades just because he didn't want to do stats. One explanation is the more abstract and unrealistic the maths is now, the more enjoyable because it feels more complicated and intelligent. It's satisfying to be able to write down a bunch of funny looking symbols on a page and actually understand them. It makes you feel like a genius with special powers that no one else has. But I haven't actually told you the main reason pure maths is most preferred. Introducing autism. Da, 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 da. Let's be real for a moment. As a university math student myself, I'm willing to bet that at least 80% of us have some form of autism. We all wear glasses, none of us can throw a ball, and we all sort of smell it. Look, it's not a bad smell, it's just that it's there. Sure, in our minds we might be evil geniuses, but in the real world we're just a bunch of nerds. And what could be more arousing to a mildly autistic nerd than a logical, structured, abstract, precise subject called pure mathematics? Mathematics is a beautiful subject. It lays the foundation of all knowledge and understanding. It's a language through which we can describe almost any concept. Independent of science or the real world, maths just is. And nothing can question its authority. It's the only subject independent of all else. The world could crumble tomorrow and two plus two would still be four. 
But when you introduce statistics, you have to make measurements which may have uncertainties, and it makes the whole thing less precise. It makes it entirely dependent on the real world, and then people can start to question the quality of each statistic. You may have noticed at the start of this video that the quality of my statistics were very poor, and this isn't something that's often measured that much. Everything that was once simple, accurate, and perfect about pure maths is ruined by the ambiguity of statistics. Hey, you forgot your stats homework.